Ever wondered what Abercrombie and Fitch was selling when they first opened their doors in 1892? Spoiler alert, it wasn't trendy clothing. In fact, it catered to the likes of Theodore Roosevelt and Amelia Earhart, selling adventure-type items. And it wasn't just your ordinary outdoor store. The flagship store on Madison Avenue had a shooting range, a golf school, a kennel for cats and dogs, and even a pool for fly fishing lessons. Now, let's go bananas with Banana Republic. Founded in 1978, the original Banana Republic was more of an adventure than a shopping trip. With hand-illustrated catalogs featuring product reviews from renowned writers and stores decked out with real jeeps, exotic plants and fog, it was an experience to remember. Gap, on the other hand, had a more humble beginning. Opening its doors in 1969, it sold nothing but men's Levi's and records. But within a year, it expanded its inventory to include Levi's for women, and eventually launched its own brand of jeans in 1974. Eddie Bauer, a name synonymous with outdoor clothing, started off in a tiny space selling tennis rackets. After a near-death experience, Bauer patented the first down jacket, a product that would forever change his business. Kohl's, known today as a department store, initially started off as a supermarket. Max Kohl, the founder, didn't abandon his original concept but expanded into department stores, running both simultaneously. Bloomingdale's, meanwhile, had quite a specific market in the 1860s. The brothers Joseph and Lyman Bloomingdale sold hoop skirts and opened their Great East Side Bazaar in 1872, offering a wide range of products from skirts to gloves. Gymboree, known today for children's clothing, was originally a play and music program for kids and parents. Clothes were only added into the mix 10 years after its inception in 1976. And finally, Nordstrom. The luxury department store that we know today started as a humble shoe store, founded by Swedish immigrant John Nordstrom using his gold rush earnings. The company expanded to eight stores by 1958, still selling nothing but shoes. It wasn't until the Nordstrom Sons acquired Best Apparel of Seattle that they began selling clothing. In summarizing these surprising transformations, it's clear that these retailers have evolved drastically over the years. From selling adventurer-type items to hoop skirts, they have adapted to the changing market trends and consumer preferences. It's also evident that most of these retailers started with a niche market before expanding their product range to cater to a wider audience. As the saying goes, change is the only constant, and these retailers surely know how to embrace it.